Let's bring Cassie and Renee up. We're going to bring Let's out welcome Cassie them home. and Renee. And they're going to do some sharing, and then we're also going to go on time of remembrance. But um, I also want to honor, we have Cassie's father here today, right? Can you just stand up? I know it's okay. Just raise hand. Thank you. And uh, Renee, your mom's here too, a family? Your mom, Sue? Yay! And so that's really special. Now, again, we don't have a time to go into a lot of history of, of, of our Global Presence Transformation Center, which is in Ghana, Africa. There is a really good documentary on our website that is a 15-minute short film documentary that um, speaks about uh, the, the history of what's taken place there. So um, you, if you want to be updated on that, you can. But these two ladies have a young apostolic women <laughs> have been there for the past five months. And and they're just given to what God is doing there. So first and foremost, I want to honor who they are. Um, not what they do, but who they are and their hearts before God. Can we do that? Can we just honor them and their hearts? Come on. Yeah, come on. Honor who they are. Who they are. As Yeah, come on. And they got all heaven cheering them on and we cheer them on. All heaven cheers them on and we cheer them on. We cheer them on as the body coming around the body and saying, go. So, you know, they've given their lives. They're young. These are like, you know, they're just giving their best because Jesus gave their best, and they love this. They're made for this. Now, not everybody's made for this, but they're made for this. They're set apart. I, I've said before, the first time I met Renee, she was like, I want to go to the deepest, darkest places of, of the earth and reach the unreached people groups. I'm like, who says that? At, how old are you? 19 now. <laughs> I think she was 18 when she says it. She goes, I want to go where nobody's heard about Jesus, and I want to go there, and I'm set apart, and I know my life is given to that. And then Cassie has just been, like, she's got this call to, to many nations and to building all over the earth, and it's been our privilege to be like, spiritual parents to her, to see her grow up the first time. The first time I spoke to her about, about the call of God her life, she looked at me like, you are crazy, but something in my spirit goes, yeah, you know, she did. And God, she just walked in it. So I love what Cassie has really just said, yes, I will walk in the fullness of what God has for me. And amazing, you know, really that's all it takes is the yes, the want to, because it's God doing the work in and through us. But they have yielded their lives and said, I will go wherever you want me to go and do whatever you want me to do. So we wanted them to share their five-month, they've had a five-month journey here. And um, why don't you ladies just share and um, we'll, we'll glean and we'll, um, we'll um, pull all that we can from that. <laughs> I want to thank, too, just Steve and Renee, just for the uh, amazing is the only word I can think of, um, <laughs> um, just the apostolic no. lifestyle that they have lived before That's me that has allowed me to walk in, and just how they've pushed through in ways, so I just, I thank you guys, too, for everything. <laughs> yeah, so it is, it is an exciting time in Ghana. We have 22 children. <laughs> That in and of itself is amazing, and it's beautiful, and um, we left uh, right after Christmas in December, and um, we'll get our, it's almost. we're almost there, um, but so we started um, simply by going in December and just really clearing the groundwork and, and doing finishing things and getting involved in the community. And so um, the first pictures that you'll see here, uh, we took some time and we went and we just blessed the schools. And so we went to the schools, both Renee and I have a love for worship and a love for the flags. And so we took a bunch of swing flags to the schools and we just released worship on the school grounds. And it was amazing. The kids just love it. They love worship. They love the music. And so, um, so we just did that with them for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, and then additionally with that, uh, once a week we would get together, pull all of our hope home kids together, and we'd, we taught them about, you know, the armor of God, and we taught them worship, and we just poured into them and loved on them. And My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Yeah. I mean, they, they sing that song so much, and e like almost every day, they just declare how big my God is and how nothing is impossible for him. Yeah, yeah they get these songs into them, and then they're, it's, it's so great now, especially as we walk around the Hope Home, and you just hear them as they're jumping rope or as they're combing our hair or as they're doing whatever they're doing, and they're just singing these songs that are bringing adoration to God and are declaring the truth of who God is. 
So these are all just uh, some pictures from our, our times with them. Playing games. Come, 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 stop. Come, 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 stop. <laughs> just learning that they can trust God and do whatever he says, even when it doesn't make sense. Uh, we also were with them um, over Valentine's Day. It was really uh, just a beautiful time. We made these little Valentines. I love you from Jesus. And we gave them to each of the kids. And we said, okay, one is for you. And one, I want you to go find someone and share the love of God with someone. And we sing this song. The love of God goes on and on. I will share it, share it, share it all around. And these kids are learning not only for themselves how much God loves them, but now they can take that love and give it to those around them. Um, so back um, right before Steve and Renee came, you guys were absolutely amazing. And the miracle of the bus. These kids were so excited. We said, guess what? Guess what? We prayed the week before we reached the goal. And we said, okay, kids, in order for you to come into the Hope Home, we need money for the bus. So we need to pray that God will provide money for the bus. So we all got together and we prayed. The next week we were able to tell them, guess what? God did a miracle. Now we have the bus and now you can come into the Hope Home. They were so excited. They cheered louder than you guys, just so you know. They, they were like, Woo, yeah, we got the bus! They were like standing and cheering. Like this is just uh, the kind of the aftermath after I they were sitting down. I tried to get my camera, but I wasn't fast enough. So this is like a couple minutes after they were cheering. They were so excited just that God had, had heard their cry. God had heard them pray. God had heard them cry for a bus. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, the bus, it's, you have no idea how um, special this bus is to the kids. They lo every Saturday, they wash the bus. They love the bus. Um, one of my favorite, favorite things with the bus was after we had first brought the kids in one day, I had to go and get a bunk bed uh, for Renee and I. And so I took some of the boys. At that time, we only had like four or five boys. And so I took them in the bus with me to go to a town that was about 40, 45 minutes away. And one of the boys, he's face up against the window, just looking out the bus, looking at everything. And I go, you know, you know, what, what are you looking at? And he goes, I've never been here before. He had never been beyond, he had never been that far away from Bethy before. And so just the like, look at, look at all these this places <laughs> was so, um, it was just awe-inspiring and so beautiful. And then we had Steve and Renee with us in February, and that was just such a fun time. Um, and it was so beautiful. Um, multiple times we were moved to tears um, as just Steve just really lavished the love on the children. And um, it was just a beautiful, beautiful time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, were, we, had, um, we were just doing his banner over me is love. And each child would pass under the banner right into the arms of Steve, who was representing the, um, he was just releasing the heart of the father over each of these children. It's just so beautiful as these children get that spirit of adoption and just they come into the joy of the Father and know that God in heaven delights in me. God in heaven loves me. He likes me. Um, we've also had some wonderful times. Once a month we have pastors that gather in our prayer and worship center there. And it's absolutely incredible to see how much God has been changing and transforming their lives. Where they're coming to a place where it's not just let's all, you know, pray whatever we want to pray. But where they're coming together in unity and truly just declaring out of a place of authority and declaring the truth of who God is and the truth of what God wants to do in their region. It's powerful and beautiful. Um, and then we have some pictures uh, when Steve and Renee were, were there also um, of the, but taking the bus to the community and just, again, casting that vision before the community. And it's so beautiful to see what God is doing um, in awakening their hearts to seeing transformation in their own village, seeing God do things. And um, it it's, was really beautiful. Right around Easter, we had uh, people were bringing us you know, their handful of, of maize and their, you know, a couple of tomatoes and just bringing donations. That Big are bowls of so mangoes. Beautiful. It was just so beautiful to see them going, I want to help these children too. I want to help to, to make a difference in their lives. And I'm going to bring whatever I have, whether it's that widow's mite or it's that big bowl of mangoes. I'm going to bring what I have um, to, to bless these children. 
also um, Cassia was able to share with um, the other half of the community just um, with the bus saying, you know, this bus is here. Um, it was really cool because now these people trust us more than they did before. You know, they've had a lot of people come in and say, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and then the people never come back. But now that we've come back again and again, we said, here is the bus. They see, wow, they really are here. We really can get behind this. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. We've also had a wonderful, amazing blessing. Uh, there's a German farm in Bethy, and uh, they're an export farm to Europe. And um, we get free fruit every week. Every Sunday. And it's free fruit. so great. Uh, so we get pineapples and papaya. We get these big, just, you know, it's such a blessing, mm -hmm. um, really. And I the, mean, when and you have that many kids, that's a lot of fruit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. to get free fruit every week is yeah. amazing. And the kids know that God is the one who's giving us this fruit. <laughs> It was really great, too. Uh, one of our staff, as uh, Renee and I were going to, to meet with the, the farmer or the, yeah, the German farm, um, she was just praying for us. And she kept hearing, free fruit, free fruit. And so then when we showed back up and we had all of this free fruit, just it was, a, it was so amazing and beautiful to see just the smile on her face like, oh, I actually heard God. He actually did it. Like, I was declaring it, and he did it. And so, um, yeah. Welcome to the Hope Home. Um, right here we have the, the welcome sign that the kids back here in the USA made and we were able to put it on the doors. The first thing that the kids did, the first group of kids, they got out of the bus and they like had their little bags or whatever and they look and they read the names on it. And the, uh, one little girl was like, Sinam, Elizabeth, that's my name and the name of uh, Lizzie here. Um, and it was just really great to just the, the connection already between the Global Presence Madison kids and the Global Presence Buffy kids. Yeah, we also have in our, our canteen, our dining room area, we have some pictures and that the kids here have drawn, and we have pictures of the kids. And so they've been learning the names, and, you know, that's Bronte, and, and that's Madison. And, that's, and so they are learning the names of our kids here, and just it's, it's so much fun for them. That's Madame Renee's sisters and her dog. <laughs> <laughs> they ask about my dog all the time now. Um, so once we had all of the kids in, we did a mural on the wall, and we just talked about being rooted and grounded in love, and so we drew this, uh, Renee and I painted this tree on the wall, and then we had our kids being the leaves, and we just talked about being rooted and grounded in the love of God and how much the Father loves them. It was just really beautiful. Uh, so the Hope Home is a place of worship. Every morning, 6 a.m., line up for worship. Everybody lines up at the gate, and we go over, and we start our day with glorifying Jesus, saying, my God loves me. My God protects me. My God is so big, and I can share the love of God everywhere we go. Um, and every morning, this is what we start with. And sometimes we'll pull out the flag. Sometimes we won't. Sometimes we'll have uh, me on the keys. Sometimes we'll just have... Um, the drums, and we'll just sing praises to God, and sometimes we'll dance around, and sometimes we'll just sit in his presence. But these kids are being infused with the presence of God, and they're starting to get it. They're starting to get it more and more. You know, they're still kids, and they'll go crazy sometimes, but they're starting to get it, to really know the love of God for themselves. And as they've been in the presence of God, they don't fight as much. They learn to love each other. They say, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? I forgive you. Sometimes it's hard, but they, are, they have come so far. It's incredible the transformation that God has done in their hearts. Sometimes I don't even need to mediate. They'll just say, I'm sorry, and I forgive you on their own. And I'm like, what just happened there? This is great. But yeah, the presence of God changes these kids. Um, we were able to share with them about Esther and the favor that she had because God was with her. And because she had the favor of God, she was able to save her nation just because God loved her and because she gazed on him. We've also been having the kids praying for people, praying for healing. And um, a week after we brought in the first kids, I twisted my ankle and it was swollen and I could hardly walk on it. And they prayed and I got healed <laughs> right away. And it was so great because I was like, how can I do this? Um, but they just, they just, you know, I was like, guys, I hurt my ankle. I need you to pray. And they just got right down in there. And um, this is, you know, Titus's dad, and I can't, I don't remember what we were praying for him in this picture, but you know, if somebody's got something going on, if somebody has a cold, we pray for them. If somebody has anything, we just, we lay hands on them and pray, and they're so, it's, it's been awesome to see God heal through their hands. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
We've also been taking a lot of time to help them with schooling. And it's been beautiful. Uh, most of these kids, they're coming, their parents can't read, their parents can't do math. So they're not having anyone to help them. So they come home with homework that they don't know how to do, but there's nobody to help them, so they just never learn how to do it. Um, so it's been so such a blessing to teach kids. And um, one of my favorite things with kids is watching them learn or understand something for the first time. Because you just, you, it's so great. I mean, when it comes to spiritual concepts, when it comes to math, when it comes to reading, it's like you can see in kids when they get it more than you can in adults. Where you can see them, like visibly watch them learn. Where one day they didn't know that 2 plus 2 is 4, but now today they can confidently come up to you and tell you that 2 plus 2 is 4. <laughs> yeah. Um, they love looking at the books. All these books that we've been able to take care, or take over, they just absolutely love it. This one sings, so they hold it up to the ear. God made you special, and he loves you very much. <laughs> um, they each have their own beds, and on the front of their beds, we put a crown that has their name on it. This was the first night that this little boy was in the home, and he's just laying there reading his name, his name on his bed, his pillow. And it was just like so beautiful, the ownership that these kids are taking because they have things now and they're learning to take care of them. They love playing football. Uh, I don't know why, but the United States seems to be the only nation that doesn't call it, that calls it soccer instead of football. So it's football, football, football. They set up their own goals. We go through about a football a month. <laughs> because they love it that much. <laughs> and because we make them use it for the whole month. <laughs> Just the kids, you know, like they have dreams of what they want to be when they grow up. And that's been beautiful, too, to see them go beyond um, the things that were possible to begin to dream to things that are impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when I, last summer when I interviewed many of them, it was, you know, I want to be a taxi driver, I want to be a farmer. But they're now starting to think like, I can actually go to high school, I can actually go to college, and I can actually have a career and do something. I can actually be a police officer, I can be a nurse. I can be these things that before were unobtainable. Mm -hmm. And it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. This little girl is absolutely amazing. Just when she smiles like that, you know that God is coming. She doesn't smile very often this much. Like, this is joy that is coming into her life playing games. My sister uh, made little rubber band bracelets, which I don't recommend. Rubber bands don't last very long in Africa. So you can send other things, just not rubber bands. But, um, but yeah, this was just really beautiful. The kids absolutely loved getting these gifts. Um, just writing, uh, spending time writing. This is a little booklet that has the, um, the so Psalm 23, Psalm 23. So they were able to, um, it was a special pencil book. And as they just rubbed the pencil over it, these pictures would appear. They're like, Madame, Madame, look, see, see, see. And they've learned um, Psalm 23 in a way that makes sense to kids. The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. He gives me strength. You know, we've taken Psalm 23 from this booklet, and it's in a way that they understand instead of just saying words. Um, but they know that God takes care of them. Flip-flops are great. These kids are adorable. Yeah. Which we have a flip-flop drive, so if any of you have brought flip-flops, there's actually a blue um, tub, tub back there by the Ghana hands, so if you want to. And you can also bring them next Sunday. Please. They go through flip-flops very fast because flip-flops. Almost once a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're running around in them. This is waiting to get their hair cut. Um, they were just super excited. It's just fun. Yep. <laughs> we brought the barber over, and they're lining up. Yep. So these are pictures from 6 March, which is their Independence Day. Um, and so it was so great. The, the first group of kids that we brought in, also we brought in the same week as 6 March. So it was just declaring that they are walking into new freedom. They are walking into their promised land. And it was just, it was just so great to go and watch our kids in the parade and everything and cheer them on. Yeah. So all... Um, all the students from the schools would gather, and each class would do their own special little march thing. And this is actually one of our girls who already is a leader in her class, and she was leading her whole class in the parade. Mm -hmm. Palm Sunday. They celebrate holidays so beautifully there. So everybody cuts their palm branches and decorates them. And, um, you know, you can put them around. You can carry them. Uh, here are the kids all excited to go to church. And um, they do these parades through the streets where, you know, just everybody will just get up in the streets and just like, Hosanna, Hosanna, and they'll sing their praise songs, they'll do their drums. And uh, Palm Sunday was absolutely great, just the kids like thinking about Jesus and what he did and how he came in. Um, by this time in the trip, it was really beautiful. 
just how much they had developed in their creativity and how much they could draw. Uh, when they first came in, most of them could draw a tree, a house, and a football, a soccer ball. And that was basically it. What are you thankful for? A tree. Okay, what are you thankful for? A tree, because that's what I know how to draw. So, but by this time in the trip, just a few weeks of being there, um, they, they've developed so much. By Palm Sunday, they were drawing people with palm branches and Jesus on something that kind of looked like a donkey. <laughs> Um, just already the just developmentally how much they've changed. Mm -hmm. So every Sunday we uh, we rotated between. There's about four different churches that we partner with. A um, couple of them in Bethy, and then a couple of others, one in Onfuega. And so um, these are just a couple pictures of me preaching every Sunday. Every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we'd go and they'd want us to share something. Um, one of the churches that we'd go to, we went there twice with the kids, and every time they wanted the kids to sing. So we would just sing over the, uh, over the congregation the songs that we'd been singing every day in the worship time. Oh, hope homeschooling! I was homeschooled, and now I'm a hope homeschool mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, so once the kids got their uh, break from school, we started teaching them at home. Uh, they teaching them phonics so that they have tools to learn how to read. Most of them only know just a few sight words, so they have no tools for reading. But um, they now know all of the sounds that all of the letters in the alphabet makes. So now when they come home from school with homework, they can start to sound it out instead of, that's a B. I'm going to say all the words that I know that start with B because I don't know how to read. Now they can start to sound it out. Yeah, it was, it was so beautiful. We do uh, phonics in the morning, and then in the afternoon, we split them into two groups, and I'd do um, adding up, subtracting, and uh, Renee would take the, the older ones and do the multiplication tables, and it was just so great to, to again, to watch them learn. Oh, uh, one of the kids, it was so great, um, as we brought the kids in, you know, we would take time and help them with their homework, and one of the kids, his name is John, and, and he... Um, after being in the home for like a week and we were helping him with his homework, he one day he just looked up and he was like, I've never finished all of my homework. In his whole time going to school for the last four or five years, he had never finished his homework. He'd never been able to go to school and turn in his homework and say it's done. And, um, and so it was just so beautiful to be like, wow, like we're really changing these kids' lives in ways that even they can see mm -hmm. in a moment. A says at and A says A. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so um, so this was the last night with the kids, just saying goodbye to them, loving on them, just you know, for one more day. The relationships that we've built with the kids are so beautiful, and they're learning to trust God, and they're learning to see that someone cares for them, mm -hmm. and their hearts are being unlocked, and they're starting to care for each other more and more. I love this. I absolutely love this. Um, so this was the day that we were leaving. We were saying goodbye, and we were, like, trying to get a group picture. And, like, the kids were like, don't go, don't go. I will hide in your bag. I will, I will take a car, and the car will catch the plane. I will lock you in the room and throw away the key. It was, it was I mean, I'm like, I thought only, like, we said that in the U.S., but no, they say that in Ghana, too. But, um, but this is just them saying goodbye, go and come. We taught them to say go and come because they know that we're coming back for them. Um, and the day that we were leaving, we were just getting ready to pull out. We look up in the sky, and God gave us a rainbow. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, you it was so beautiful just to, to turn and look. And as we're climbing in the van, this rainbow appeared. It was just, it was really great. Mm -hmm. These are our kids. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I just want to ask them a couple questions because it's been really wonderful. We've had some coffee time and some walks in the dog park and, and everything. And what God has is not only doing in and through them, like we just you know, we just saw lives getting impact, and us, we're doing this together. This is the mothership. This, if this doesn't exist, that doesn't exist. This is the mothership. Even Cassie being home, she knows enough that she will bring her strength here when she is home because this is what, you know, fuels that, you know what I mean, helps that all to come together. So in that, um, but with Cassie and Renee, as they've been home, it's been really beautiful to hear what God's been doing in their personal hearts. So I just want maybe each of you to share, you know, like um, just just what you what God has personally done in your heart um, during this time. One other thing I want to say, too, just about Renee, um, just to bless you. Um, thank you so much. Um, it was so different going this time, having somebody alongside of me. 
Um, but you were so such a blessing. And your ability to take leadership and to own things and yet still come under a, a leadership is so beautiful at your age. It's so beautiful. It's stunning. And just to be able to, to submit to my leadership as I submit to Steve and Renee, it's just beautiful. <laughs> It's just, it works so well. It's so great yeah. to have someone that I know is right there. Yeah. You're right here, and I know, yeah. I know that. <laughs> and yeah. it, especially through this process of bringing the kids in, it was like I needed to know there was someone that was locked and loaded with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I think Renee and I both kind of came to the same word if we were to describe the last five months, and it would be brokenness. Yeah. But not in the sense of, like, I'm dying and I can't get up. <laughs> But in the sense of, I know that I am dying, and I know that I am dead, but Jesus is so alive, <laughs> and his resurrection power is what's in me, and what carries me, and what fuels me, and what sustains me. Mm -hmm. um, and in, it's, God knows our limits far more than we know our own limits. And I can, there were time after time where God was like, nope, actually, you can go so much farther. Just lean in. And he, it really was a season of learning to lean mm -hmm. in ways that I've never learned to lean on him. Mm -hmm. You know, where you just, when you're physically, um, there were times when it was, you know, we had curses spoken against us, and I'm sick, and I'm whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very sick on my bed, but I know I have to go and meet with these German farmers because it's going to bring breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And so I go to that meeting. As soon as I get in the car, everything lifts. But it's one of those where it's, you have to lean and you have to hear from God saying, no, you will stand up and you will stand here and it will bring the provision of free fruit every week for the rest of these children's lives. <laughs> you know, but, it's, it, but it takes that leaning and that, and that realizing, I can't do this, God, but you are more than able to do it. You are so much bigger than I am. And so I'm going to lean into you right now and I'm going to stand in you and not stand in my own strength. And one of the things I, I for me, like, one of the best things for me to hear from God when I ask him, like, can I do that, is for him to say no. <laughs> because when he says no, then I know I can't do it in my own strength. And to know that I can't do it in my own strength means it has to be a miracle. And so, and that is become something that's so reassuring and just so, so comforting to me to be like, God, can I do this? And he'll be like, no. <laughs> you absolutely, you can't. And that's, um, yeah. Yeah. So. Never have I, never before have I felt so broken yet so victorious. I mean, I was at my weakest points again and again where it's like, God, I've given everything I am. I've given everything. And God, a long time ago, I said yes to you. I will follow you to the ends of the earth because I want your love to saturate people's lives in all corners of the earth. God, I want to reach the unreached. I want to reach those who don't know your love. And I will go. I will go. I said that a long time ago when I was eight years old. I knew that I was going to be a missionary. Mm -hmm. Sixteen years old. It's like, yes, God, I will go. Eighteen. Uh, yes, I will go. Nineteen. God, I'm, I'm here. And I know there's more, but I'm here. And this is hard. But even in this point where it is hard, mm -hmm. I still will go. I want to go deeper. Mm -hmm. God, I said yes before, but I'm saying yes now again. Will you take me? Because I'm so broken. And he just began to fill me and fill me and fill me. Just a few minutes with just me and him, I was able to come back and just like have so much more love to pour into the children. And just like feeling God's affection for me, going, yes, that's my girl and she's going, but she's not doing it alone. She's leaning into me. It was absolutely great. And then there are other times where it's like, ah, I don't know what's wrong with me. And Cassie's like, well, I think you're dealing with this. <laughs> oh, okay. So then I'd like go and I'd, you know, like we'd be working or doing stuff with the kids and I'd just kind of like be processing. I'm like, hey, I feel a whole lot better now. Thanks, Cass. Um, and just like, it was, I could not have asked for a better partner to be in the mission field with for five months, my first like <laughs> into missions. Um, I really, it's incredible how much this girl trusts Jesus and lays down everything, her own desires for him is absolutely incredible. I mean, it sets the standard high, and then I'm like, yes, I can do that too. And then together, it's, it's really beautiful, just the partnership that God had between us. And um, God just, the thing that I learned through all of this is God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. No matter if you feel like, hey, this is great, this is the easiest thing in the world, or oh my goodness, I can't even survive. God is faithful. He pulls us through every time. Let's let's give them a let's just let's just give them a shout and cheer them on. Thank you. 
So good. So we so appreciate. Cassie, I wanted to speak in, in, a, in the prayer time you spoke over. I just, it's in my notes here <laughs> that you spoke over about the depths. The waves are created in the depths. I just wanted you to pray that over us. Do you remember? I um, yeah. I'm we were talking about, um, it came out of a time we were talking about how the reality of every time I've come back, there's like five new vehicles. <laughs> and people are driving new cars. And so we were talking about, Renee was talking about how she wanted, had wanted a Genesis. She wanted the Genesis rest. But God had given her a Malibu, a thundering voice. And so um, I just felt like the Lord was saying, especially in this season that we're walking into, is that God has given us a thundering voice to create the Genesis rest. Mm -hmm. And so I just speak that over global presence. I speak that. I say, God, would you come? You have a thundering voice, and you have given global presence a thundering voice, and we release that thundering voice to create in Madison, to create in Ghana, to create in this yeah. world a Genesis rest. God, that you would take us back to the garden, and God, that from the depths, God, the waves are created in the depths. It's in those deep places, those deep places of loss. It's in those deep places of joy. It's in those deep places of pain. It's in those deep places of rest. It's in the depths that the waves are created and crash upon the shores and change the landscape of the beach. So, God, I just speak that from the depths, God, I ask even now I released a groan into the depths of people, God, to cry out in intercession, to cry out for Madison, to cry out for global presence, to cry out for Ghana, to cry out for God to release his presence in the earth from the depths of their soul that it would crash out of their mouth in a thundering voice in Jesus' name. Come on, that's a thundering, crashing voice. Come on, wow.